Simply fill a sandbag and put it into place can be the difference between success and failure when it comes to levee building. Tim shows us how to build an effective sandbag levee and how to use pumps to manage the seepage that occurs. I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, sandbag protection, using sandbags to, uh, to build levees around uh, the structure that you're trying to protect from any high water. The most important thing in your protection obviously is going to be the sandbag. Your basic sandbag here is about 16 inches by about 30, 32 inches. When it comes to getting sandbags, the homeowner is going to have an awful lot to choose from, and that means that there's going to be big bags like pinto bean bags or potato bags, very unwieldy, very hard to fill, they're very large. Uh, if you put sand in them, uh, the correct amount of sand, you're going to have it so heavy that most people won't be able to, to even handle the bags. So obviously you want to make sure that you're buying or, or obtaining the correct sandbag. Most of them now are made out of poly. There are also burlap bags which are better but much more expensive. But this plastic bag uh, right here is your basic sandbag and that's what you want to look for. You'll notice when we fill the bag that we want to fill the bag only half to three quarters full. Uh, we want to leave some room in the bag so when the bag is laid the sand can settle in and it makes a much better uh, uh, protective barrier than, and, uh, and then it's, the other factor is it's, uh, you get the right size sandbag and about half to three quarters full gives you about a 50 pound bag and that's about as much as we want folks to, to have to handle. We want to have a pointed shovel because if you have a square shovel you're not going to be able to fit it in the bag. As you can see here we'll be able to just dip the point right down in there and uh, it'll take about three or four of our uh, shovel fulls. And we're about half full there, about one more, and we're about two-thirds full. And that's as full as you want to have that bag. A washed, clean sand is best for filling sandbags. You can buy it from sand and gravel companies. We've got a uh, small cross-section of a levee that we've constructed here. The rule of thumb that we recommend is for a sandbag levee, just like an earthen levee, to be three times as wide as it is high. So if you're going to build a three foot high sandbag levee, we'd like to see that thing about nine feet wide. Uh, we understand that because of manpower and resource needs and time constraints, that's the optimum. And, and anytime you, we see a flood, often we see levees that aren't quite built like that. But that's what we'd like to recommend is, uh, is three times as wide as it is high. And then if, uh, if you have to make it a little bit smaller than that, you have to do so. Uh, you obviously, you've got to get the protection in place before the water comes. Uh, when we lay the bags, again, we have these bags that are half to three quarters full. Uh, we lay them with the flow. So if the river's flowing from my back to my front this way, we want to lay the bag with the open end with the flow. So we'll go ahead and lay a few bags on top of this one and show you that uh, the bag will lay in there just like this. We leave the open end downstream and it settles nicely into some of those spots. And uh, that'll fill in the voids. And of course, the, the width of the levee gives us a number of things. It gives us a, a much longer seepage path because any levee will seep. It doesn't matter if it's a, a dam built to hold back a lake or an earthen levee or a plywood levee or a sandbag levee. Water's going to get through it. So what we want to do is get the, the sandbags down on the bare ground and get them laid in in a, in a good cross section. And then for extra protection against seepage in a sandbag levee, we'd like to put plastic. We recommend putting plastic over every sandbag levee that's ever constructed. And how we do that is you get the, the plastic and you lay it down first here and you put your first row of sandbags on your water side on the plastic in order to anchor it down. And then we'll pull the plastic up over the top. We'll still see some seepage underneath uh, the levee as it gets underneath the plastic and moves through. But this protects, it gives a solid barrier against the water. And so you've got even another line of defense against water getting through your levee. What we found is putting poly over the top of your levee like this will reduce the, um, the seepage through your levee 60 to 70 percent. Once we get the plastic over the top, we want to anchor it down so the wind or something else doesn't blow it and kind of ruin our efforts. So we'll put sandbags either on the top or on the back side in order to anchor this plastic in place and keep it there. You're always going to be pumping on the back side of the levee um, some seepage and the more you can keep the water out, the less pumps you have to maintain, the less concern we have with water getting near the structure we're trying to protect. When covering your levee, use heavy plastic. Plastic is measured in mils. A six mil plastic is recommended. 
We constructed a, a small cross section here, approximately three feet high. We probably didn't even get our nine feet at the base. We only are at about seven and a half to eight feet. But it does allow a very long seepage path, which is better. It allows for those bags that are only half full to settle into those voids and to really give us a good seal. It also allows that if, if the water level uh, forecasts were raised that you can get on this levee and you, even though you lose the good side slopes, you can raise this levee quite a bit and still have good protection, probably another foot, foot and a half, two feet. Over here we have a levee that you see probably more often during an emergency because of the limits in time and the limits in manpower and resources not having enough bags or sand. Homeowners will stack these up and they're only too wide here you can see it's the same approximately the same height as the levee we just showed you. The seepage path is very narrow so you're going to have an awful lot of seepage to manage and that means more pumping, a lot more pumping behind the levee. Once the water gets up on this the force of it these bags will slide and the water has a tremendous amount of force when it gets up against these. This bag here, you can see, it wouldn't take very much to push that and allow it and it'll just slide and it'll just slide right off and that's what will happen on your levee too. The last thing that's very bad about this is if your water levels did raise, if the forecast was to raise the river level, that you really don't have much of anywhere to go. You don't have those side slopes to build up a nice higher levee that you only could probably place a bag or two on top of this and and that would be very iffy if you could get much more protection from a, a levee like this. Four feet is the maximum recommended height for a sandbag levee. Anything higher will increase the potential for failure. Another type of barrier that, that folks use is a uh, what's called a flashboard levee where they'll pound some stakes in the ground and then they'll uh, attach a piece of plywood to them and about a foot uh, on the riverward side they'll do the same thing and they'll put these two pieces of plywood parallel and construct their levee that way and then uh, Chris if you could put some sand in they'll fill in the interior of this with sand and uh, that just again creates a much bigger barrier. Some people will just use the one piece of plywood, but there's an awful lot of seepage that occurs with that. Obviously, plywood doesn't deal with water very well, um, but when you use both of them and then fill that area up with sand, that provides a pretty good barrier. When you're limited in time and resources and have to build a, a levee like this where you don't have a very good cross section, Another way to use this plywood is you can use it on the back side, say if the water's out there, we can use this plywood and some 2x4 bracing behind it to brace that to keep it from sliding. If the water's pushing those bags back this way, that'll keep the, the bags from sliding and, and causing us a problem. Secondary to that, we'll go to the other side here, Milt, and we'll just set these in like this. We could put the plywood on the water side. If we have enough time, we could put the plywood on the water side, and if we only have a few sandbags, we could back them up and use them as ballast against, and that require, then you wouldn't have near as much bracing required on the back side. 